hot seat events for the Calgary Leadership Forum and the PC Leadership uh, Race. This is nothing new to us. We have done debates for the mayoralty, we've done debates for the Liberal Party, the Alberta Party, the PC Party, and we decided to do these private receptions this time around. We are getting ready to do one for the, as you all have heard, the new Democrats are about to pick a candidate. Not that I want to offend you in any way, uh, but we'll be paying attention to them. Uh, we believe very much in our Good folks getting to know each other, so you've got the one minute, meet the person on your left, meet the person on your right, you've got one minute, say hello to everybody if you haven't met already. <laughs> I would like you to meet the members of the, Cal the board of the Calgary Leadership Forum, and this thinned out pretty well for this weekend, but we're delighted our secretary, Elaine Yost, Elaine Yost is here, yay Elaine, yay. Yay. and our executive director, Dolores, who is busy upstairs, and you met her pretty hard to miss her, thanks, we're, we're delighted, and uh, we have a few more coming a little bit late. Um, just a reminder that the Calgary Leadership Forum is a sponsor of the Speaker's Corner, and that event is, well, speaking of Speaker's Corner, oh. would you please welcome timely introduction of the uh, founder and president of Speaker's Corner, Gabor. I'm going to give you a minute just to tell us who's the next speaker and what's happening with Speaker's Corner. Yay, Gabor! Yay. <laughs> about baptism by fire. I just drove in from Sherwood Park I, where I swam, won four gold medals. Oh. Oh. But I came here to see the candidate and to, uh, uh, to compliment the other Eastern European immigrant kid who's done well. Uh, but this is about Speaker's Corner, right? Well, how many of you were here the last time? Okay, so I mean, is there really a... All right, Speaker's Corner, I'll be very quick. Uh, you've heard of Hyde Park. Yes. London, England. It's a tradition that goes back about 165 years. It's, it's a uh, format to allow for civic participation. People get up, they talk, they rant, they rave, the topical issues are addressed. And it occurred to me about two, three years ago that uh, Calgary could benefit from a program of this nature. So we started one. It runs at uh, Tompkin Park. Uh, we've had some great success. Of, uh, we've been warmly embraced by the media. We've had uh, political leaders. Uh, Party leaders debate. Danielle Smith debated the uh, leader of the Green Party once. This gentleman actually archived our very first session. And uh, so the bottom line is that it plays out about 1, 1 to uh, 1.30 to 3.30 on Sunday afternoons. And uh, to uh, brazenly plagiarize the mission statement of the CBC, what we want to do is inform, enlighten, and entertain. And so if uh, any of you, and we've had atheists debating religionists, we've had uh, debates on whether or not uh, public funds should be um, allocated to private schools. 
Uh, and we've had all manner of uh, whether or not assisted suicide should be allowed. And so we try to cover uh, interests of topic, and uh, we encourage you guys to uh, check it out. Um, as for what's next, uh, the, the next debate that we're lining up, but we don't have a date confirmed, is the uh, one between atheists and religionists again. And uh, this is a topic of enduring interest, and uh, that's, that's where it's at. So, um, <coughs> what more can I say? Thank All right, you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. So tell us again, how many gold medals did you just win? Four. 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 Okay. All right. Four. But just just to be clear, this is 55 plus. So I, I'm I'm competing <laughs> against people in my age group, and uh, I'm a little advanced. I'm a little beyond 55 plus. Anyway. We just want to know when you're going to act your age. But you go take a seat. <laughs> they, they, say, they say growing gold is. Uh, not optional, but growing up is. <laughs> and, if you don't grow up, and if you don't grow up by 50, you don't have to. <laughs> well, I like to quote from Satchel Page. who said, if you didn't know how old you was, how old would you be? So what I want to do is turn to your buddy, tell him your real age and how old you think you are. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to meet our mascot, Sunny Lee, my uh, five and a half year old, Golden. And uh, just in case you need this, just pass this around here. <laughs> Never let it be said, we're an, I'm not a sensitive man. I have read the copy of the book. No. That all women will appreciate how to be sensitive, pretend to listen and cry. So I am the right male. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, it's not really a book, I'm just kidding. We'll just leave it here. Sure. I'm getting the look here. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, this group is, this, uh, the sponsors for this, uh, these receptions, these hot, bait, hot seats, are the Canadian Club, uh, and I'd like to acknowledge Brian Duclo, representing the Canadian Club. Yay, Brian. <laughs> And the Kirby Center, and we're thrilled that, that their executive director, Luann, is here. Luann Whitmer. <laughs> All right, and to introduce our guest speaker, I'll call upon our secretary, Elaine Yost. Elaine, the Yost is on you. The Yost is on you. All right. <laughs> well, it is indeed my pleasure and honor to uh, introduce Thomas Lukasek. Um, we're involved in a very interesting time in Alberta, and we have a very interesting race going on, and I don't think we should assume anything by what is going on. We had a very interesting conversation a couple weeks ago with Rick McKayer, and, uh, and we're looking forward to a wonderful time today. So, um, I don't know how many of you saw the paper last Thursday, but uh, there was some interesting information about Thomas there. And um, it's a joy to have you here, and we thank you very much for coming and for spending some time with us on the long weekend. Um, Thomas didn't want me to say anything particular, so I'm not going to. <laughs> I like that. It's just that he is from Edmonton. Uh, he's been the deputy premier. He's been in advanced education. And then he's concerned about many of the issues that all of us here are interested in asking him questions about. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Thomas Lucasic. So the, the topic is religion versus atheism, is that what it is? <laughs> and we have you on the atheism side. It's their God-given right to decide whatever they want. <laughs> here, here. Very good. Here, here. Very good. Well, first of all, th thank you for having me. <laughs> 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 including me in your in your speaker's uh, series and I'm, and I'm glad that you have extended the opportunity to all, all three candidates because it really is a very pivotal time in our province right now it's, it's not often that we get to directly vote for our premier and yet we all know that in our system of government premiers are very pivotal in, in shaping the future of our province in, in shaping the government 
As our premiers appoint their cabinet ministers, they give them a mandate letter, and ministers simply deliver on what premier's agenda is and premier's platform during a leadership race may have been. We have this unique opportunity, although we had few of those in the last few years in Alberta, where we get to directly vote for our premier. So uh, it's, it's really an honor for me uh, to be participating in this, in this particular race. Maybe what I shall do is, at the beginning, allow me to lay out my platform to you and then what it is that I'm speaking with Albertans to as I travel the province. As of, as of tomorrow, driving back to Edmonton, we will have reached 31,000 kilometers on our campaign vehicle uh, in three months. So we have covered the province uh, rather thoroughly, although it is difficult to cover the entire province uh, in, in three months. But I can tell you that 80% of what I'm hearing, no matter where I go, is very similar. There are some unique regional issues that would account for the 20% of issues, but there are some major issues that need to be addressed. So my platform really shaped itself through talking and listening to Albertans and through my almost 14 years of, of elected experience, but most importantly, through my interaction with constituents in my own life. I have two daughters, 5 and 14. Both of us are working as, as parents. Uh, a mother in a senior's home, so my family life, I think, is very much reflective of most, most Albertans, and I tend to contend with some of the very same issues. So my platform has shaped itself into two major planks. One has to do with economic development, the other one has to do with social development. And I know that it is true that neither one can develop, neither one can happen with the absence of the other one. They're very much intertwined. So let's talk maybe about the economic development first. You know, we, we have been very fortunate in this province over the last decades relevant to our economic success. And, and there are bragging points that, that we can bring forward. You know, highest average weekly earnings and lowest taxation and lowest unemployment and the list goes on and on. And a lot of that is because as Albertans, we have made some very critical decisions some 43 years ago. And I'll look at you every time I make that comment because I know you served with Premier Lockheed. But Premier Lockheed's government uh, and uh, private sector have made some very critical decisions 43 years ago when they decided to invest in oil sands at a time when our conventional oil was still gushing out of the ground, uh, where Americans would buy every single barrel of conventional oil that we could produce. They were visionaries, both in, in, in private sector and in government, and they drew a conclusion, probably akin to the fact that the Stone Age did not end because they ran out of stones, bronze came along, <laughs> and they knew that conventional oil is not going to end the day you hear that slurping sound in the ground, that we need to invest in some other economies to diversify our economy. Ayostra was put together as a mechanism through which oil sands were developed, and and uh, regulatory regimes were changed. And look at us now, 43 years later, aren't we glad that they did what they did? Well, the question is now, are we going to make similar, to make similar decisions and make similar investments? So 43 years from now, Albertans will look back and say, thank God these guys met here in the basement and decided that we further need to diversify our economy so we can grow our quality of life moving forward. And the fact is that it is not necessarily to replace our carbon-based economy because I think our, that economy will treat us well for many years to come. We need to nurture that economy. We need to do it in a very balanced manner, making sure that we have the consumer confidence uh, to buy our products from an environment and stewardship perspective. But the fact is that it is very difficult to govern our province as it would have been, I imagine, from 82 to 86 because of the fluctuating revenue that our province experiences based mainly on one commodity. It's very difficult to operate our school systems, healthcare systems, and other systems when we in this room today have no idea what our provincial revenue will be literally next month. That is why I am so passionate about diversifying our economy. We talk about it a lot, but every time oil hits $100 a barrel, we say, ah, never mind. The times are good, let's just carry on. We can't afford to do that anymore. And that is why we have to take an inventory of what we have in this province, what are our strengths and weaknesses, and decide what the next oil sands will be for the province of Alberta. And I'll share a couple ideas with you, but I'm sure you may have some other ones that are equally worthy exploring. One is agriculture. Agriculture in this province hasn't changed really fundamentally over the last hundred years. So machines got fancier, farms got bigger, but at the end of the day, we're still producing the same products and exporting them in the same state, being raw agricultural products. And the fact is that when you actually go to Safeway and you pick up a box of Kellogg's cornflakes, 
these skeletal scarf legs that really lend themselves well.